I'm an author, speaker, live and business coach, and a direct sales expert. On The King Pinion Show, I'll introduce you to today's hottest entrepreneurs, celebrity guests, individuals who would inspire and motivate you with their stories, and as a wife and a mom, I'll show you how to balance career and family. My name is King Pinion, and I'm here to equip, encourage, and empower lives. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you tune in today. I hope you're having a fabulous day wherever you are in the world. Well, today we have an amazing show for you. My guest is an author, a speaker, a mom, and a woman of incredible strength and courage. And I guarantee you, her story is gonna inspire you. She's also an entrepreneur. So all you entrepreneurs out there, we have a treat for you today on the show. Well, Tammy, I am so glad to have you on the show with me today, and welcome. How are you doing? I am awesome. I am so excited to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. Oh, you look you look beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I clean up pretty well. Yeah, that color looks great on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell our audience who Tammy Gaines is? Oh, man, how long is your show? Well, you, you, you take your time. You got all your time. Uh, who am I? You know, I tell people that there's two lives that we that we have one life is a life that we live from and there's a life that we learn from so the life that I was living from from the longest time is that I uh, have my MBA from Columbia I grew up in corporate America uh, hitting the glass ceiling and doing all those other great things that I know you know about and when I became pregnant with my oldest daughter which is going to be 16 years in June I quit working for the man and I started my own business and I've been a very successful entrepreneur. I had a strategic planning consultancy. I was a venture capitalist for many years. I did angel investing. Um, always have been a trainer and a motivational speaker. Uh, but that, you know, that's the life I was living from and the story that I was living from. But really what changed my life and how I became who you see sitting here today is the life I learned from. And that is very much a life where uh, seven and a half years ago I became unexpectedly pregnant with twins. And when I went home and told my then husband of 12 years that I was pregnant, he said he didn't want any more kids, he didn't want a bigger family, and gave me an ultimatum. And he said I could have him, or I could have the twins, but I couldn't have both. How many kids did you have before that? We had two at that point. Gordon, together? Boy and a girl. Oh yeah, all together. And your marriage was fine? Well, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what did you, know, you do? What did you do? Downs. Well, you know, what I did was, what. look, I always tell people that the hardest decisions are best made swiftly. And it took about 15 seconds to say, you can go, I'm gonna have the twins. I don't even know them and I like them better than you. And uh, so off he went and we started a very nasty divorce proceeding and I kept going into preterm labor over the stress. And I was finally placed on bed rest for five weeks in the hospital, trying to stay pregnant. And I lasted five weeks. At the end of the five weeks, they did an emergency C-section. And my twins were born at 25 weeks, weighing one pound, 12 ounces each and they were immediately taken to the neonatal intensive care unit, which is the um, ICU basically for little babies. And my daughter spent four months in the NICU and my son was in the hospital for 18 months before he came home. Oh my God, oh my God, that must have been very difficult. That is an understatement. Yes, it's I can only imagine. So what was that experience like, Tammy? That experience was the most unbelievable thing I think somebody could go through. It was, uh, I was telling somebody, you know, earlier, it was all about defining the new normal. Like what people expect is like a normal pregnancy and when it doesn't become that normal pregnancy, it's very much redefining um, what that looks like. And my experience in particular, I had, you know, my daughter was in the hospital for four months and she had some kidney issues and she had some eye issues, uh, but generally she came through it pretty easy. When she came home, she came home on oxygen and she had some monitors because uh, she would have apnea, meaning she would stop breathing when she went to sleep at night, which was like, hello. Oh day. my God, how old was she, at five months? Babe, from the time she was a baby. Um, but my son had a much harder road. He, you know, by the time we left the NICU, he had a tracheotomy, he was on a ventilator, he was on oxygen, he had had two heart surgeries, hernia surgery, he had a G2 placed in his stomach, which is how he eats even still today. Um, so when you say what was that experience like, you know, you have to accept very quickly that what you thought it was going to be is not. And there's some peace in that moment. Like I remember that moment where I was just like, okay, well this is what it's going to be. That, that was the moment of surrender, right? Complete surrender and complete serenity. Wow. Did you have any support system? How did you manage to, to work that? Um, I had a very small 
circle of people in my life that were there for me. You know, my cousin being one, she was, she's extraordinary. My cousin Kamari has just had my back from the very beginning when this went down. She was like the first person I told this was happening. Um, my sister-in-law, Shandrea, who lived in California at the time, she flew back, happened to be on her way to see me when I was placed on bed rest. Where was her brother? My brother? No, her, her brother, your husband. It was not, no, that was my brother's wife. Okay, okay, okay. Blood is thicker than water. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And so she helped you through all of this? Yeah, they were just there. They, you know, my sister in California couldn't necessarily be there, but she was there on the phone. She came for a week when I was first on bed rest, which was the most, that was the time they didn't think I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. And they thought I should just, you know, have the abortion, like the twins aren't going to make it. But I think her being there and laughing, <laughs> and joking and just talking about like, yeah. the good old days. Yes. I'm convinced that's what got me through the first week, just being completely relaxed. Yeah, I always say you need one of those in your circle, somebody who can laugh and make light of anything that's going on, because otherwise you go crazy, right? Exactly. Now, so after you left uh, um, NICU and went home, what were some of the unforeseen um, challenges of, of having a, a premature baby? Well, when we left the NICU, um, it was like chapter two and having a preemie baby. You know, I was in and out of the hospital with my son for another couple of years. And we were in the hospitals recently as a few months ago for five weeks. Um, I was still getting divorced. So in the middle of everything else, I was in and out of court, you know, dealing with craziness of crazy. And you know, my, my two older kids, they had some scarring, you know, it was very hard for them also. So, you know, coming home and bringing him home uh, was in and of itself tough. Uh, we called 911 at least once a week to you know resuscitate him and you know I think the best thing out of all of this is that he came home and the reason I got him home and I fought for him to be home was that I said if he's not gonna make it he's not gonna make it at home he's wow. not gonna not make it in the hospital wow okay I want you to hold that thought when we come okay. back I'm gonna ask you some more questions and we're gonna go on a commercial break right now the world can be compared to a jungle there's always something new around the next bend or some unexpected surprise getting ready to fall on you from a tree. The rules change often and fast. There is an urgency to stay one step ahead. Concrete Jungle will help you to avoid the obstacles and jungle predators. Learn how to trust your instincts, think outside of the box, and become an achiever from celebrity authors King Pinion, Bob Proctor, Steve Rizzo, and Mark Leader. Concrete Jungle will inspire, motivate, and give you the tools you need to conquer the world. Grab your copy today from kingpinion.com. That's kingpinion.com. Ladies, it's time to ignite your life and become a new woman. On the King Pinion Show! <laughs> Get the tools to help fight for your breakthrough, mind, body, and soul. Join author, speaker, life and business coach, King Pinion, for the Ignite Your Life Women's Conference. I pledge to totally equip, encourage, and empower you ladies. Log on and register today at kingpinion.com. That's kingpinion.com. Welcome back to the show. Again, we're with Miss Tammy Gaines. She's an author, a speaker, an entrepreneur, and also a super woman, as you can tell from, from the interview. So coming back to you, Tammy, um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about the challenges of raising a preemie baby at home? Yeah, you know, it's funny. When they said, okay, you can bring your daughter home, I was like, are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? It was like um, total state of denial that this was actually happening. And uh, so for her, you know, when she came home, she was on oxygen. And I remember I carried her to the parking lot in her carrier and I put her in the car seat and I just sat in the parking lot seriously for like 25 minutes. So I was like, if I leave here, I know. I'm out, like I know. I'm gone. And there's no coming back. And that was all I knew. Like that was my safety net for so long. And um, when I brought Trey home, it was a fight to get him home. So I had to be, I had no idea what I was fighting for. I just know I just didn't want him to be in a hospital. Yeah. Like babies aren't meant to be raised in an institution. So the arrangements to get him home were extraordinary. You know, we had to have 
uh, highly skilled nursing for his ventilator, mm -hmm. way to notify the police department, the fire department. You know, I had to be specially trained in everything from CPR to putting his trach in to, I had to, I had a whole entire ventilator training for a week. So I became a nurse, which was not what I wanted to be, but I think you do what you have to do you know, right. for your kids. So um, the journey home was much harder than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of long nights. I was so paranoid about something happening to him that I would just stay up all night. Like for the first three weeks, I just stayed up all night. And I had nurses in the house. And it finally took one of the nurses. She came downstairs and she was like, why aren't you sleeping? I was like, I'm just afraid. Like I was living in a complete state of fear that the ventilator was going to break, that the oxygen was going to come out, that the nurse was going to fall and hit her head upstairs in the room and I'd never know it. Like I was living in a complete state of paranoia. And that was the first night she's like, go to sleep. I promise I will wake you up if something happens. And so I started sleeping with one eye open, which was pretty good. <laughs> then it took another month and I, you know, finally got both eyes closed and it's taken. I still have like sleep issues now. Like wow. I can hear like a mouse walking across the backyard. So it was a lot, but I'm so much stronger. I got through things I never thought I could get through. So is this why you wrote the book, Preemie Parents, 26 Ways to Raise a Premature Baby? You know, it's interesting. My, my son was in the hospital for 18 months before he came home. And at some point during that time, I had to do an overnight because he was having surgery. And one of the doctors came to me and said, you know, you should write a book. And I was like, I have no time, no brain space, no nothing for writing a book. And he said, no, it would help so many other parents because he just said I was so peaceful and very spiritual and just walked in faith during, during that entire, you know, experience. So I wrote a book, which is not a medical book. It's all about the spiritual side of the NICU. It's all about how you can grow through the experience, not just grow through that experience. Um, and that's what led me to write the book. And in fact, I wrote that book in four days. Wow. When, after I resisted writing it, I finally sat down one day. I said, I'm going to write that book. And it just came flooding out of me. Oh, wow. Wow. And I understand it's a bestseller in this category. In the category, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, I always say that God has a way of taking your struggles and turning it into a story for other people to learn from. Absolutely. And just before we, we got on set, you were telling me about the, the statistics for premature babies in, in Africa. Yeah. And that blew me away because I'm from Africa, as you can tell, but mm -hmm. I really had no clue that this was a big deal in Africa. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't... I think most people have no idea how prevalent prematurity is, but in the U.S. alone, 500,000 babies a year are born premature. That's half a million. Half a million babies a year. That's new every single year. Oh my God. And worldwide, prematurity is an epidemic. So Bill Clinton and his, um, you know, his global health initiative, that's one of his priorities is prematurity. So we have to find a way to get these books into the hands of the people in Africa because many of them are really clueless when it comes to dealing with this stuff, right? Absolutely. And it's always unexpected. And, you know, I can't remember the name of the clinic, but I sent 50 books to Africa. Somebody contacted me from Africa. She was starting a clinic mm -hmm. in uh, one of the, you know, outskirts of Africa. And I did send her um, 50 books. Wow. When we come back, I want to find out from Tammy why they call her the messenger. In today's business world, success is an art form. You must continue to broaden your knowledge base to keep up with the latest trends, strategies, and ideas in order to succeed. Author, speaker, coach, and direct sales expert, King Pinion, has co-authored in an inspiring new book titled Mastering the Art of Success, along with celebrity authors Les Brown, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, and many others. The authors featured in this book were specifically chosen to help you create winning habits and acquire the vital information you need to stay competitive. Reading what these authors have to share will be time well spent and you'll pick up vital new skills. You will also learn how to make smarter decisions, enhance what works, and eliminate what does not. Each chapter in Mastering the Art of Success is like a mini coaching session that will help you achieve your personal and organizational goals. Remember, you are the author of your life. You have the power to unlock your potential and Mastering the Art of Success will show you how. For more information and to order your copy of Mastering the Art of Success, please visit kingpinion.com. That's kingpinion.com. 
Hey guys, we're at the University of Maryland for our Five Links Regional event with our co-founder, Mr. Jeb Tyler. We just had an amazing event. It's incredible how much fun we have while building the business. It's so good to be able to make money with people whom you trust, people whom you love. And this gentleman right here is the brain and the visionary behind Five Links. It was incredible and I'm looking forward to equipping, encouraging, and empowering more people with the wealth machine called Five Links. We just had an amazing regional event here in Maryland, King Pinion running it, unbelievable. We are creating so many success stories all over the country, 17 cities today, over 600 people in Maryland. If you're not in Five Links, take a look, let's join together. Welcome back to the show. I know you guys have been having a fantastic time. Again, our guest is Tammy Gaines, and I have learned so much. I hope you guys are learning too. What is the number one cause, in, in your opinion, for uh, premature, ba premature babies? Well, I'll tell you the, what the uh, current thinking is, because I'm not a medical professional, and despite all I've had to do, I'm not a nurse. Um, but most of the research points to stress as the leading cause of prematurity. Yeah and people's inability to cope with stress. And you know, we live in a stressful environment, whether it's your job or your spouse or your kids or money or relationships, whatever it is, it, that stress is typically what brings on uh, premature labor. So I think it begs the question, how do we help our society, women in particular, right. be able to manage stress? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I would totally agree. And I could see all of the ingredients for you to have that situation with, you know, the, the spouse you've right. known for 12 years saying no to a baby, mm -hmm. um, turning his back even when you were really showing interest in having the kids. You know, so it must have been a very difficult situation. But but that's that. Why did they call you the messenger? <laughs> that's exactly what I did. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> right? And um, we keep it moving. You keep it moving. I mean, that's the past. Yes. So, the, you know, the reason... I um, that I've come to be called the messenger really probably started with my perspective on everything I've gone through. Mm -hmm. I believe I was selected for a very particular reason. Yes. And I think the universe picked me because they knew I'd be the perfect messenger for the message. I like that. The universe picked me. They did. Yeah, because many I people mean, tend to blame it on the universe. Right. Why did you do that to well, me? Why, I did, me? Why, why me? Why I don't me? deserve this. Why can't I be like them? Exactly. But you, you choose to say the universe picked me. picked me. And I had a moment, you know, I'm human. I had a moment where I was like, why did it what did i do to deserve all of this and you know you can only kind of soak in that bathtub for a few minutes before you have to keep it moving especially when you have kids they're counting on you yes so i got to a point where i said why not me like i'm exactly the right person you know i'm, I'm a great advocate for my kids i was exactly the right mom to have in the NICU for 18 months because mm -hmm. i know that a lot of other parents learned from watching me and i i coached a lot of them on how to talk to docs in a way that was um empowering for them and their babies mm -hmm. And I've talked to a lot of women all over the all over the country that are going through divorce and they're being crippled by it. And I said, you know, this is a this is your rebirth. And that really led me to come up with this concept of the rebirth of soul, which is um, how I'm manifesting being a messenger today. Yes. And uh, the concept of the rebirth of soul is that everything is happening to you exactly when it should for exactly the right reasons. And our job is to just be in the process of growing through it, allowing yes. that process to happen. Um, so it's a four-part process, and this is really from my own experience of having premature twins, of becoming a single mom, of going through divorce. You know, to me, the rebirth of soul, and we don't know we're going through it, we're just going through it. The first part is preparation. Yes. And that's basically the universe preparing you for something bigger. Mm -hmm. It's for this, the calling that's going to happen, and you have to decide whether or not you're going to answer the phone. Yes. And some people ignore it, and I would say they get the same lessons over and over and over again until you actually learn it. And once you get through that preparation phase, which is really like reality, like, oh boy, this is really happening. Then you move into what I call the purge phase. And the purge phase is getting rid of all that, all those things that no longer serve you on your journey to be something bigger and something different. So we could purge relationships, we could purge habits, we could purge thoughts, we could purge emotions that don't serve us. But that was, it's a, that's a hard process to get through, you know, letting go of all those things that have kept you comfortable for so long. The third phase is what I call the production phase. And this is a phase where we actually feel like we're ready to create something. What we're creating is our new vision of what we're going to become coming through this. So it's where the rebirth happens is in this phase. 
And for me, my vision was to be a really empowered mom and to be a role model for balance and abundance. So, you know, letting women know that you can have it all, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be out of balance for a little while. Um, but you know, during the time where my twins were in the hospital, I wrote a book, I got divorced. I buried two grandmothers in like great fashion and they were my role models. And each of those things that happened, something great came out of it. Right. So creating that new vision of who you wanna be is that third phase. And then the last phase is paradise. It's when you actually get to it and you recognize that you're there and you celebrate your victories and you celebrate along the way. And then what happens? Life gives you another hit and you do it all over again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're better the second, you know, you're better. The more you use it, the better you get and the faster you move through it. Right. So pretty much from what I'm hearing, the rebirth of the soul is a journey, yes. a journey through life and embracing everything that comes our way and seeing it as a gift, really a gift from God. That's really what it is. That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and do you air on, on, on the Women to, for Women Network? A radio I show? do. I actually, you know, I turned it in. First, it was kind of a philosophy, and I do a lot of speaking and training about that. And then I was approached to become a host on uh, W4WN, which is the number one women's network on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I launched my show, The Rebirth of Soul, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really fun. It's you know finding people with great stories that you would never otherwise know. Right. So I'm not interested in getting. I mean, I might. But like the big giant celebrities, everybody knows. I mm -hmm. like to get the regular men and women, by the way, right. that have overcome something extraordinary. Well, Tammy, thank you so much for coming on the King Pinion Show. It's been a, an amazing conversation with you. I know that the viewers have learned a lot and that so many people have been equipped, encouraged, and empowered by your story. So um, congratulations again on your new show, and I look forward to having you back. Thank you. It's been an honor, and congratulations on your show, and I hope you would be on my show because I know you have a story <laughs> also. So block out Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. Right. I'm going to rope you right in. Right. When does your show air again? Can you tell the audience a little bit about that sure it's Wednesdays from 10 to 11 in the morning on Eastern time and okay. they can uh, listen to the show at TammyGaines.com they can listen live okay great well thank you again so much and you're very gracious well I want to thank you so much for watching it's been an incredible show I hope that you learned a lot from Miss Tammy Gaines we have an unbelievable guest with an incredible story uh, coming up next week so I encourage you to tune in again to KingPinion.com for the next um, show Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you. You can leave me a comment on my website, kingpinion.com. Connect with me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. My name is King Pinion, and I'm here to equip, encourage, and empower lives.